Just when you thought it was already hard enough to choose your Next.js framework, we got Next.js, we got Remix, we got Tanstack Start, and now we have OneStack.dev from the makers of Tamagui. Let's jump in and see what it's all about. Okay, so OneStack.dev, creating websites and apps is simply too complex. Yep, we can all agree that that's the case. One is a new React framework for web and native built on Vite. Simplifies things with universal typed routing, seamless across static, server, and client pages, plus an amazing new solution to data. So this is cool. This is something we want to highlight here. As simple as running NPX1. And if you have some time, watch this video here. It's pretty cool. So some of the highlights here that we have typed FS routing. So that's a file system routing. So you're similar to what you've seen in Remix or Next. With nested layouts and groups fully typed. Routing modes, sparse, single page app, what's SSR, server-side rendering. Yeah, obviously that's a good one. And then SSG is this static site generation. All right, so it supports three routing modes, single page apps, server-side rendering, and static site generation. One lets you choose globally or per page, or sorry, and per page, that's key. Loaders, so we've got type loaders. So similar to what you've seen in Remix, to make it easy to bring in data and migrate from other frameworks. Also the typed, so that's handy. Web plus native, this is obviously a massive pro for Tamagui, which I've covered before. Um, and this almost looks like it could be a replacement for Tamagui as a starter, um, instead of using like Tamagui starter kit. But you can build a, a website with React or a native app with React Native or both of them at the same time. So you can share components across, very cool, very nice. 100% Vite, no more Metro. So that's that little plugin that runs between, usually in React Native, I believe. Um, so that's gone. One Vite plugin, one server, one port, three platforms. What are the three platforms? Is it so that's re, uh, web and death, um, but I'm not, I might be missing something there. I don't know what the third one is. And then the future of data. This is really interesting. So they they betting on this um, new, I guess it's a framework as well of, of getting data called Zero Sync. Uh, so Zero Sync is a, what do they call it? A general purpose sync engine uh, for the web. So you put Zero in front of your existing database or web service and we distribute your backend all the way to the main thread of the UI. So it's a way of querying data and it syncs it via WebSockets as well. So if you make a change in one place and the data changes, it does sync it to the client. I saw that in the demo, that's really cool. And you get a client-side API that looks like an embedded DB. So you can basically make queries and stuff. And I think, and obviously being, zero, I think it syncs locally first and then does a synchronize. And it synchronizes the most frequently used 100 megabytes of data to the client side persistent cache. So cache it locally and then sync it back up to the DB. So very cool. This isn't out yet. So it's instant responses, automatic reactive queries, dramatically faster and scalable. All right, so this is really cool. But this is releasing fall 2024, open beta next year, quarter one, 2025. So that's a cool piece. That's not available right now from what I've seen, but very cool. Uh, local focus, simpler code, better results, cross-platform, that's the goal. With one and Tamagui, we're close, but there's still one big pain and that's data. Right, so that's what where they're bringing in zero here. So Tamagui is awesome, covered it before. This is all integrated in here. So let's, um, Let's dive in and give it a go. Let's see if it's as simple as running the command. So we just run npx, let's just firstly for me, I always need to make sure, nvm, let's make sure I'm running 18. Yep, we've got good on 18. So we're gonna go uh, npx1, bang it out. Let's see what happens. All right, let's create a new app. We're gonna go hello one, and we're gonna try the full stack one here, Drizzle, Postgres, Tamagui, and Biome. So using all the latest tech here. So that's cool, we're gonna use Yarn. Let us do its thing. All right, that takes a little bit of time. Once that's done, we're gonna jump in. So we're gonna go CD hello one. Now, this is super key. So we're gonna actually open this, open it up in cursor so we can check it out. Um, but let me bump this up so everyone can see. Excellent. Now, read the docs, read the manual. Very important. I didn't do that the first time, so that wasn't fun. But will this stay open? There we go. All right, welcome to one. We'll need to run Postgres. So now, if you're not running Postgres, this offers a really nice way to do it, and this is the way I'm gonna do it here. Get Docker Desktop or OrbStack if you're on Mac. I'm using Docker Desktop. Make sure that's running, and then run Docker Compose up. And it's slightly different for me. I had to do Docker Space Compose and then up. 
all right? And that's gonna start up the Postgres. It's gonna do a primary and a secondary replica or a read replica. And you can see that inside of the Docker Compose file here, it's gonna set up Postgres primary and Postgres replica, right? So it's setting the user to user and Postgres here. And then you can see that these are being set here. So this got me in the beginning. If you wanna use your own DB that you're running already, just make sure you set these here and you should be good to go. But I'm just using Docker here because it's nice and easy and I wanna follow the manual. Next, we run yarn db init. So let's just set that up in a new um, screen here. And I just want, I don't know, mine always changes. I need to set my default to 18 for these days. Uh, if we go and run yarn db init, it's gonna go and run drizzle and it's gonna set up some tables and push some data into us, into the, into the db for us. And now we can run yarn dev. And I just wanna make sure I thought it was, yeah, so yarn dev runs yarn one dev. So we just run the yarn dev, okay? So yarn dev, bang, bang that out. All right, so it does a little bit of patching there, not 100% sure what it's doing, but here we go. So we're running on 8081, but now what you, a cool little thing you can do is you can just hit type o, o, W, and it's gonna open the web, okay? And that automatically opened a nice tab for me, right here, and we are running the app. So this is loading now all the data from the DB, and you can see it's a fully functioning app, right? So quite a nice little uh, way to get started. Obviously, um, you wouldn't probably want to do it in when you're starting a fresh app because it's got a whole bunch of nonce, but all good for now as a demo. So let's have a look at what this, this new uh, little framework offers us. So I'm gonna just make this nice and big so everyone can see it real clear. Okay, so here we are. What do we have? Tamagui, oh, my old friend, I like, good to see you here. Now, app. Okay, so this is the, I'm imagining, where's our entry? It'd be interesting to see where our entry, so that probably lives in your V. I'm not 100% sure, where do we actually enter from? I'm imagining it's somewhere here. Maybe it's just this, this layout folder. Someone can probably let me know if I'm doing it wrong in the comments. I might have to make this one smaller so I can actually see what's going on. But here we go. So inside of a layout, we've got a layout.tsx file here. And you can see this is really cool. So from Tamagui, we get this little is web um, Boolean pulling straight from Tamagui. And so we're running this conditionally only if it's web, okay? So that's cool. So those are the headers. You don't, obviously don't need that in native. We've got our load progress bar from one. That's interesting. Like what is this little component? That must be a little cross-platform component there. Scheme provider, which is basically just your color scheme here from v VXRN. I haven't used that one before, but it's it's just to do you know your light, light dark mode or your color schemes. Then you've got your Tamagui root provider, which is basically wrapping the whole app in Tamagui, so we can you know use the same components across native and web. Awesome. And then we're rendering our home layout, and the home layout comes from code home home layout. Okay, so very basic stuff here. Nothing nothing crazy. Loading a bit of style sheets up here. So now we have our app, and then we have our code. That's an interesting way to break it down. So not familiar to me so far, but I guess these are kind of like what we used to see as features or screens. Um, but I guess they're kind of locating these now. It could be a page or just UI. Look, so you've got um, theme stuff or UI stuff. So that's kind of cool. And then we're pulling out the home layout. This is really cool here that you can see straight away. We've got home layout and then we've got home layout.native. So this is where you can split. So when you want to run some different, like a full different layout on, on your phone um, or your React Native app versus just your web, you can and very easy to just split and diverge. Or if it's the same, just keep it the same. So you can use the same thing. So I, I watched them, them talk about that in the video, which is really cool. So you can see here, so for the home layout, we're rendering tabs, which are coming from one. Uh, and then we have the different things, so tab screens, where you can get do the icons. So, you know, you're writing React Native style code here, and we're using tab down the bottom of your phone. Whereas the for the web, we don't need that. So what we're doing here is we've got a, we've got a different thing, depending on if it's a touch screen or a mouse screen, they're gonna lay out different things. So what is the home layout touch? Okay, well, it's all rendering within here. So if it's a touch screen, it's like this, uh, and where are they doing? What's the difference that they're doing here? So they've got a scroll view and a slot, scroll view and a slot, logo. So they're, they're kind of changing up the layout a little bit, depending if you're on a touch device or a mouse device. And is touchable comes from Tamagui. So Tamagui is exporting that Boolean. So you can see how these things are quite tightly knit together. Um, Tamagui's and also this new one framework, 
which is really cool. So anyway, we'll keep going down. So we've got home layout and let's just pretend for instance, we're on the mouse. So we've got our Y stack here and these are our variables from Tamagui. These are kind of like the predefined values. Very cool. And X stack. So with you, we work in X and Y stacks. I think that's like just to control like kind of our flex boxes, but because it has to be cross platform, we've got our nav links here and then a view uh, with a flex. And then here's our links. So if we have a look at this, what are we looking at right now? It's these guys over here, the home layer. So that's the nav link. So where the nav link sitting. So that's inside of our X stack that runs this way. So, we, so our X stack goes across and then we got a, a Y stack, which is basically this guy here um, in here. So I'll zoom in a bit. This left column here is our Y stack. And then we've got our logo, our nav links, a view, and then a toggle theme link down the bottom here. And they're using that view to grow the flex. So you're using flex inside of, um, you can use it in native and stuff as well. And then we've got another Y stack, which has a scroll view and it has a slot. Now the slot is interesting. So that comes from one. So if we have a look at that, we've got our, and the slot, this is really cool. So the slot must be used to inject content that is at the route. So I'm imagining now because we're at the index route, if we have a look at the layout, we have, we're rendering that. And then we're probably rendering the what are we rendering the feed index? So that's feed is a group. And then this is just the index route. Okay. And then if we have a look here, so this content here is titled feed and that's the options title. Where's that actually coming in? So let's have a look, uh, feed, let's do a find feed, feed card. I wonder where that title is actually getting rendered. Interesting. Anyway, can't see that one there. A stack screen options title. Maybe that's for, um, that's probably for native to be honest. I'm imagining that's what will be rendered in native. And then here we're rendering the refresh control. And that's when you're in um, mobile where you can pull down and reload the page. So that's obviously not rendering here. Let's if we set this to true, I bet you it still probably won't render not nah, because it's in it's in um, web. So this will be a native control here. And then we're just mapping through this feed card, right? So if we jump into this feed card, we've got all this stuff here. Now what we want to see as well is this feed. So here we go. So this is what we want to look at next. It's this loader. So this is similar to Remix um, with Remix loaders. So I think they've taken inspiration from that. So let's jump into that. The loader takes in the path. So if we go console.log and then let's just log path and let's just see where that runs. So does that run? Will we see it here? Well, we've got a nice error. It's a hydration error. Love those. Um, and then let's have a look here. If we can see it in here, there's the path. So because it's running on the server, so the loader runs on the server and you can see here our path is the root path, okay? So it's getting the full URL over here, the page, the limit. So that's like the kind of pagination. And then now we're awaiting the DB, right? So DB comes from this code DB connection. And what is this doing? It's a using drizzle and it's created, setting up our connection to our Postgres DB using our database um, URL and then returning the data there, okay? So what are we doing? So we're getting our feed, which is a weight DB and then it's just doing your, your standard drizzle stuff, right? So select um, the ID, the content, the credit out user, the likes count, the replies count, the repost count from posts and posts comes from your DB schema right here. Okay, so this is all part of your DB schema for drizzle. I'm not a hundred like very familiar with drizzle. I don't usually use it um, Prisma man, but this is the schema here. It all makes sense. So we're getting all that and then we're left joining users where users ID. This is cool. Order by limit offset return feed. Okay. And then when we get our feedback, we can console log and this should be on the front end here. So let's have a look. There we go. We've got our feed, which is an array of objects with the content, the credit, the likes, the user and the name and the avatar. Okay. So that's how we get our data. So that's very cool. So that's, that's like remix. Um, makes it quite clear here uh, where you're getting your stuff from. And then look, to be honest, the rest of it is very simple. It's very straightforward. It's just the standard react code you'd be seeing anywhere else. But I think the pros here of this whole setup is that you're getting the ability to build your web and your native at the same time. So if you have an app 
that is going to pay. Usually I'd, I'd suggest there's probably something that wants to be mobile first. Like you want to have it in an app. That's the core goal. But you also don't want to neglect the web where you you know you can have people looking at it there, but also more for SEO. So you want your search engines to be able to find the content your users are creating on the app. Usually that's a walled garden. So if you have an app that runs with data, it's, you're going to either have to build a new website to kind of surface that content or, you know, well, how else do you do it? it gets gets stuck there so this is a cool way to like you can smash out both pages and then you can like put that on the web for the internet like get it server rendered super fast seo time and you're getting your native app as well i think that's where tamagui kind of shines and i think this is where this this kind of stack will really work uh, the zero um integration isn't there yet so that's something i really want to test so i'll do another video on that but i think from what you can see here it's very simple to do you know get started and build an app and then also look it's got its api right routes here so it has an authentication api right here and this is cool too this is saying on a call out as well see these little pluses here that tells you how it should be rendered so if you have a look at the um, one stack.dev and then jump into the docs we can see this so if we go into routing overview you can see here where they have it down the bottom they have the routing mode you can choose a rendering st a strategy on a per page basis using a file name suffix. This is really cool because then you can just say, well, this page I want to be a, a spa or a single page app. This one I want to render server side. It just, that for me just creates that really nice quick like breakout where you can say, okay, well, I want my whole app to be a spa, but I want these marketing pages to be uh, server side rendered so that I can get the best SEO performance possible. And I want to snap instantly there. Then you can say, hey, this is will render the page as an API route. So this is what they've done here. It's the API route with the different requests. So you have a get request, you have a post request. And I find this very clear to know what's going on. So you go authentication, um, kind of that CRUD style, which is really cool. Um, and then you can even do routing per platform. So you can go .web, .native, .ios, .android, right? So you can go to .native for to cover iOS and Android, or you can split it off and just do iOS and Android. Very powerful, very cool. This is in beta. So check it out, onestack.dev, and give our mate a shout out for his hard work. He's worked on Tamagui, now they're doing one. They're trying to build the ideal platform to just literally, it, it calls it out there, one stack to smash out your native app, smash out your website, get your data all in super easy using this new zero sync framework, which is really cool. So yeah, that's it. I'll catch you guys on the next one.